Fear can be a good thing if it forces you to be cautious, to learn the ropes, and to make informed decisions. But fear born from ignorance is crippling. Admittedly, the whole subject of finances can seem truly overwhelming. Who has the time, let alone the interest, to learn a whole new language, to figure out what's a good investment and what's not? It's so much easier to ignore it completely or let someone else do it. That's what I did. Then my husband lost a fortune. And later, when I found an advisor, I got so freaked out when the market crashed in 1987 that I wouldn't listen when he advised me to stay put, generating even more losses. Today, I'm a huge advocate of hiring financial professionals, be they accountants, lawyers, or advisors. But as I learned the hard way, financial planners make lousy Prince Charmings. No one, I mean no one, cares about your money like you do, no matter how trustworthy they may seem. The first law of investing is this. Never, ever put money in anything you don't understand, whether it's a stock, a bond, or the market itself. If you ignore the first law of investing, you put yourself at terrible risk. You don't know what you're buying. You won't understand when to sell. And you have no basis to evaluate advice. Lack of knowledge and poor decisions, more than any down market, is what does most people in. Step five, respecting and appreciating money. Make sure this won't happen to you. Riding the learning curve. I can tell you from experience, it doesn't take a lot of time to get smart about money, and the subject is not nearly as complicated as it seems. What really helped me was to finally understand how the learning curve works. I devoted a whole chapter to this subject in Prince Charming Isn't Coming, which has generated the most interest from readers. Learning anything new, whether it's managing money or speaking Swahili, follows a predictable process of four sequential stages.